Welcome to Working Capital series. This is video number five. Let's look at this case. A company plans to manufacture and sell 400 units of a domestic appliance per month at a price of rupees 600. The ratio of cost to selling price are as follows. Raw material is 30 percentage of selling price. Packing material 10 percentage of selling price. Direct labor 15 percent. Direct expenses 5 percent. Fixed overheads are estimated at 4,32,000 per annum. The following norms are maintained for inventory management. Raw material 30 days, packing material 15 days, finished goods 200 units, work in progress 7 days. Other particulars. Credit sales represent 80% of total sales and dealers enjoy 30 working days credit, balance 20% or cash sales. Creditors allow 21 working days credit for payment. Lag in payment of overheads and expenses is 15 working days. Cash requirements to be 12% of net working capital. Working days in a year are taken as 300 for budgeting purpose. You have to prepare a working capital requirement forecast for the budget year. Okay. So here we have to arrive at the working capital forecast. That is we should know how much they have to invest in raw material stock, packing material, finished goods, work in progress debtors. And we have to see how much is going to be funded because funding can happen through creditors support. That is creditors for raw material. It can also happen through creditors for packing material also. It can happen through creditors for expenses and overheads. So once you net these two, that is current assets and current liability, you will know networking capital, on that if you uh, provide for this 12 percentage okay you will also get to know what is the cash that is required and then we will be able to arrive at the total working capital required but here for all this we need a certain fundamental information we are given that selling price is 600 okay using selling price uh, we can arrive at debtors but do we know what is the raw material cost it is not given directly. It is expressed as percentage of selling price and how we are going to value at work in progress, how we are going to value at finished goods. For all those, we need further information like total cost and all. Okay. So we have to start with a working note. So let's have our working note number one. In this working note, we will arrive at total cost profit then sales of course that is given okay so computation of total cost and profit here profit is basically byproduct because sales information we have and once we apply all the data we will be able to arrive at total cost okay so first let's arrive at raw material what is the information given raw material is 30 percentage of selling price which is 600 so it is 600 into 30 percentage so raw material cost is 180 then there are packing materials in short i'll write as pm and that is 600 into 10 percentage that is 60 then direct labor which is 600 into 15 percent and that works out to 90 then you have direct expense which is 600 into 5 percent so that is 30 and uh, do not come to a conclusion that all the costs are factored because there is fixed overheads fixed overheads the information is given on per annum basis that is 4,32,000 this 4,32,000 is spent for producing how many units see 400 units are manufactured and sold in a month so in a year 400 into 12 4800 units are going to be sold okay so it's for that 4800 units this 432000 is spent so this fixed overheads in short i'll write as foh this 432000 is spent for this 400 units per month into 12 that is 4800 units so 432000 divided by 4800 will give you 90 okay so this makes your total cost so i'll say total cost is nothing but 
180 plus 60 plus 90 plus 30 plus 90 450 and we know what is the selling price selling price is 600 so I'll write the selling price here selling price is 600 total cost is 450 so in between there is a difference 600 minus 450 this 150 what is this 150 obvious it is profit okay so with the total cost of 450 profit of 150 is added and goods are sold for 600 per unit okay and this information we are going to make use in forecast of working capital requirement so let's move on we'll start with forecast forecast of working capital requirements first let's capture all the current assets in that the first I raw material what information we have regarding raw material they are going to maintain raw material for 30 days and we know what is raw material cost per unit which is 180 now listen 4800 units is the one full year production okay that 4800 into 180 is the cost that's for 300 days so look at here 4800 how I got this 4800 400 into 12 okay this is for 300 days then what is for the raw material holding days that is 30 and to arrive at money value you have to multiply with the cost the cost is 180 okay so 4800 divided by 300 into 30 into 180 will give you 86,400 so this is the investment required in raw material then packing material is 15 days okay so for packing material also how many units for how many units packing materials are required for 4800 units and this is for how many days in a year 300 days in a year multiply by for how many days you are going to keep packing material 15 days only so 15 multiplied by packing material cost what is the packing material cost it is 60 so let us multiply with 60 so 4800 by 300 into 15 into 60 will give you 14,400 so this is the investment required in packing material next item is work in progress work in progress see this work in progress requires a small computation because in the production raw material will be fed in the beginning then comes the direct labor then comes the wages overheads and all this raw material will go in the beginning so for this entire seven days raw material will be consumed but when it comes to a direct labor see the question of packing does not arise for work in progress okay whereas the direct labor direct expenses overheads uh, we can say they are applied on an average that is at 50 percent level so for that we have to arrive at that cost how we are going to do it look at this we'll have this working note 3 what is the work in progress cost per unit I said raw material will go in the beginning itself what is raw material cost per unit which we have arrived at it is 180 whereas direct labor its cost per unit is 90 but we are going to assume average utilization it means for entire seven days they are not going to work on it so that is the assumption here so 50 percent so 90 into 50 percent is 45 then direct expenses the cost per unit what we have arrived at is 30 that multiplied by 50 percent will take so that is 15 and then fixed overheads what we have arrived at in our working note 1 is 90 that multiplied by 50 percent that multiplied by 50 percent so that is once again 45 so now let's add all this 180 45 45 is 90 so it is 270 270 plus 15 285 so this is work in progress per unit that is work in progress per unit cost now let's go back to our working working note 2 so how to arrive at this see we know what is per unit cost 
So for the seven days, how many units will be in progress? That's what we have to see. This 4,800 is for 300 days. What is for seven days? Okay. And that multiplied with work in progress cost per unit of 285. If you do so, you will get value as 31,920. Okay. That's about work in progress. Then comes the finished goods. Finished goods, it is given in the question, they are going to maintain certain number of units of finished goods. How much? 200 units. And we know what is the cost, overall cost. What is the overall cost? It is 450. So we just have to consider that it is 200 units into rupees 450, which works out to 90,000. That's about finished goods. Then debtors. Credit sale represent 80% of total sales and dealers enjoy 30 days credit. So let's look at the total sales first. How many units they are selling? 4,800 units is what they are selling. Okay. So let's do that computation. Debtors, 4,800 units they are selling at 600 rupees. This is for 300 days what is for 30 days but this is on the overall sales we have to consider only the credit sale credit sale is 80 percent of total sales so into 80 percentage into 80 percentage so it is 4800 into 600 divided by 300 into 30 into 80 percent that is 80 by 100 and what you get is 2 lakh 30,400. 2 lakh 30,400. So we are done with all the current assets. And if you add all this, what you will get is 4 lakh 53,120. Okay. So the first part is done. That is current asset. Now we will arrive at current liabilities. What are the current liabilities? Look, creditors allow 21 days credit for payment. Okay. So the first item is creditors for raw material. See, 4,800 units is for 300 days. Okay. Then for this 21 days, how much? That should be multiplied by raw material cost per unit, which is 180. So the result is 60,480. This is creditors for raw material. Then creditors for Packing. Craters for packing material is not given separately. So we'll conclude that craters allow 21 days working days credit for payment for both raw material and packing material. Okay. So on the assumption, craters for packing material, 4,800 units, that's for 300 days. Okay. What's for 21 days? And this should be multiplied with packing material cost per unit. What is the packing pin real cost per unit? It is 60. So multiplied by 60. And this calculation will give you value as 20,160. So that is done. Okay. Next one is there are certain creators for overheads and expenses and that is available for 15 days. So here we write creators for expenses and overheads. Okay. Now look at this. 4,800 is for 300 days. How much is for this? 15 days. And that should be multiplied with this overhead cost per unit and expenses cost per unit. What is the overhead cost per unit? It is 90. What is direct expense cost per unit? Is 30. So 30 plus 90, 120. So we'll write that 120. So this calculation will give the value 28,800. Okay, so we are done with current liabilities also. If you total all this, you will get 1,9440. Okay, so this is current liability and here you have the current asset. Now let's find networking capital. Item C, networking capital, which is nothing but item A minus B. 4,53,120 minus 1,9440 will give you 3,43,680. And question says cash requirement is 12% of networking capital. So item D, add cash requirement. And this is basically 
12 percentage of C. So, 3,43,680 into 12 percent works out to 41,242 and if you sum this, you will get to know what is the total working capital required. So, we can say total working capital requirement is 3,43,680 plus 41,242. It is 3,84,920. Okay. And here, as far as the work in progress valuation is concerned, we have taken raw material cost at 100% level and 50% for wages, overheads, expenses. And when it comes to the valuation of debtors, we didn't go for cash cost and all. We have valued the debtors at selling price itself. Okay. And if you like this video, please click that like button and please write a comment if you have learned something really useful. And also please share this for the benefit of others. Thank you. As you watch this video, I wish to introduce one of our uh, best selling course so that you can continue your learning. Now what you have seen is working capital. Okay, so that's going to be relevant for bank executives. So if you're a bank executive and if you wish to learn more about working capital, then you can go for this course called banking credit analysis process. Or if you are a bank executive preparing for a certified credit professional examination, then there is a course called certified credit professional courses package. It is mainly focused on your examination angle. Or if you are a student pursuing CA, CMA, ACCA, then I would suggest go for this course, financial management, a complete study. Okay. So I'm going to put the link of all the three courses, depending upon your background, whether you are a banker or bank executive preparing for CCP exam or student pursuing professional course or even graduation, post-graduation like BCom, BBA, MCom, MBA, uh, this course will be of great use for you. Okay. So go ahead and enroll the link in the description below and you can also use the coupon code, coupon code 10DISC.